Hey there, welcome back to the At Home Dive YouTube channel. As always, my name is Joey, and today we're in the kitchen making something fantastic. We all know that St. Patrick's Day is just around the corner, so today we're going to throw together a green velvet cake so that we can be nice and festive and have something sweet to share with our friends whenever we all get together for the holiday. So sit back, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive right in. Before I get too far into making my recipe, I always like to prepare my cake pans. And I do that by rubbing butter all over the inside and then coating them in flour. This is how I do that. Now that our pans are ready, we're gonna go and trade these out for all the ingredients and preheat our oven to 375 degrees. So on the counter today, we have a pretty simple list of ingredients and it's about what you would expect with most cakes. But we're gonna start with eight ounces or two sticks of salted room temperature butter. I did get this out first before I started gathering anything else. And to that, we're gonna add two cups of granulated white sugar. We have two tablespoons of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of baking powder, one half teaspoon of baking soda, two and a half cups of AP flour, 10 ounces of buttermilk. I have green food coloring. I'm gonna start with one tablespoon and I might end up adding a little bit more along the way. So we'll keep this on hand. And I'm also gonna add in two teaspoons of vanilla extract and I've got three eggs. That's really all we're gonna need for the cake and we'll go over what we need for the icing here in a little bit. The first thing I'm gonna do is consolidate my baking powder, baking soda, and my flour together, because I'm gonna be adding these together. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add my sugar into my butter, because we'll start by beating those together. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in my vanilla and my green food coloring to my buttermilk. Now I can get all these things out of the way, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my mixer and beat the sugar and butter together on medium for about five minutes, or until it's creamy and fluffy. Feel free to rake down the sides as you see fit, because it's important that everything gets well incorporated. Five minutes later. This is nice and fluffy and even has like a white color to it now. So this is pretty much what we're looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside for just a second. We're gonna take our three eggs and we're gonna beat them lightly and then add them into the mix. I like to add my eggs with the mixer running on medium low and let them pretty much incorporate all the way before I continue to pour. Since there's about three eggs, I'm gonna add these in three small stages. Here comes the only slightly tricky part of this entire deal. We're gonna add in the flour mixture and the buttermilk mixture alternating back and forth. So I'm gonna start with one third of the flour mixture and half the buttermilk mixture. And then I'm gonna add in half the flour mixture, the remaining buttermilk and the remaining flour mixture. So let's get started. Just like anything else we mix in the mixer, it's always a good idea to go ahead and stop somewhere along the way, rake down the sides and make sure that we're getting absolutely everything fully incorporated. Even though this mixer is doing a pretty good job, there's still some stuff left behind. We're also gonna make sure we rake the bottom of the bowl as well. This is where you get your first feel of if you have enough food coloring or not. Personally, I typically like to go ahead and add just a splash more, but it's completely up to you. Now for our final mix. Now comes the time that we've all been waiting for. We're gonna go ahead and divide our batter close to evenly between these three pans. So as you see here, these are all pretty close, but for now we're gonna go into our 375 degree preheated oven. We're gonna come back and check on these and rotate them here in a few minutes, but we're baking for a total of 25 minutes or so until they pass the toothpick test. So we cooked ours for about 25 minutes, rotating about halfway through. And as you can see, that one's pretty clean. That one's pretty clean. And this one's pretty clean as well. So these are ready to go. I'm gonna let them sit here for about 10 minutes and then we'll pull them out of the pans. We're back and it's been about 10 minutes and these are cool enough to handle now. So I'm just gonna grab these and flip them right out of the pan. Then I'm gonna let these sit here and cool all the way down to room temperature throughout. Now that our cakes are mostly cooled, it's time to make the icing. So I've got 12 ounces of cream cheese, six ounces of butter, three cups of confectioner sugar, and I'm gonna use one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. We're gonna beat the butter and cream cheese until nice and smooth, and then we'll add in the other ingredients and beat it until it's smooth again. Once your butter and cream cheese are mostly smooth, we're gonna go ahead and add in one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and the confectioner sugar. And then we're gonna beat this until smooth again. Remember, we're gonna rake the sides a couple times along the way. At this part, we need to make sure they get fully incorporated nice and smooth. Start off slow so you don't make a huge mess. Now 
If any of your cakes are uneven or have too much of a dome shape to it, feel free to grab a serrated knife, try to hold it as level as possible, and then just go through and trim this so that it's a little bit easier to work with. This is gonna help you get your cakes nice and even looking as you plate them up and begin to ice them. It also kind of help your cakes hold their true structure and shape that you're looking for as it sits over time. I'm gonna start by putting one layer down on the cake riser. From there, I'm gonna put a fair amount of cream cheese frosting right in the middle of it, and spread it around to the outsides. From there, I'll begin making the layers of the cake and then following up by putting the icing around the outside of the cake to decorate. Always go a little lighter on icing than you'd like to make sure yours makes it to the end. You can always add more to the outside later on. You can leave it like this if you'd like, but also I went ahead and cut out a four leaf clover and with that I'm just gonna grab some extra sanding sugar that I had left over from another project and I'm just gonna color the four leaf clover in with it. With our cake being finally decorated I do like to go ahead and make one final pass around the outside and just make sure that any light spots are nice and covered and it gives you a chance to smooth this out as much or little as you choose. Personally I'm not too worried about mine being perfectly smooth because we have this beautiful four leaf clover on top that's gonna distract everybody. So there we are. Here's our beautiful four leaf clover green velvet cake. So here is our cake. As you can see, we have nice even air pockets and nice thick layers with the nice bit of icing in between. We have the decorations on top and this is the creamy cream cheese, beautiful icing we have here. And if we take a look at the rest of our cake, this thing is fantastically beautiful. It's soft and creamy and rich. Let's go ahead and try this out and see what we think. Just as expected, we have this soft, smooth, slightly cocoa-y chocolate cake with a nice, creamy, rich cream cheese icing. And this thing is fantastic, guys. All right, well that wraps us up on how to make green velvet cake, your St. Patrick's Day holiday special. Comment below and let me know how yours turns out. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.